Glasses Malone in the green room, man. This is a good one, man. I'm glad to be linking up with you, right. chopping it up. Thanks for having me, dog. Thank yeah. you for having me. For sure, it's an honor and a privilege, man. It's all love, man. We've been talking about it, so yeah. once you reached out, I was like, if a nigga hit you like twice or three times, you're like, oh, this nigga's serious. <laughs> so. Nah, that's me for sure. I respect that, man. I think um, hip hop needed a little foot in his ass to get some hustle on, so. Ain't nothing like seeing a nigga hustling, you know what I mean? That reminds you exactly of what this shit is about and the opportunities it can create for the ghetto, you know what I'm saying? For people from the ghetto. So I love it. I'm here. Facts. And that's definitely like some of that type of talk is what I would definitely want to get into because lately I feel like you've been kicking that shit like that niggas need to hear about this, the culture and shit. Yeah, shit. It, it, it was made for this shit. This hip hop shit, shout out to the Bronx, but they made this shit for the ghetto to shine. And, um, I'm sure sometimes within it, we don't like how some things look, you know what I mean? But I hope we don't grow up to a place to where we become the same people that was condemning the shit, you know what I mean, that we was listening to. So I, one of my greatest fears is that I always tell Charlemagne and different homies, like, I don't want us to become see the Lord's Tucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, seeing the sexy red and be talking shit. Like, so, you know, even if we don't understand it, hopefully we have a little bit more patience with everything. You know, Handle it with some from, compassion a little bit. Yeah, people coming from the streets, let them tell their story. And it's, it's up to us to, you know, they'll get some money, they'll get some, you know, they'll get some experience then. Facts. You originally from Watts or Compton? Watts and Compton my whole life. So my mom and dad broke up when I was a little kid. Uh, my dad remarried when I was like four. He moved to Watts. My mom stayed in Compton. So it's been back and forth the whole time. For sure. And them is just legendary places as far as L.A., you like street culture, but hip hop as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what all street urban culture is, is hip hop. So, yeah, Compton, obviously, um, everybody know about them people. But Watts, Cam, you know, Tyrese, um, different people, Whispers, you know, before, like more soul and, and hella blackness, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. If you look at Compton early on in the 50s and 60s, it was still white. You know what I'm saying? Kevin Costner from Compton. Oh, okay. Shit. So, yeah, Watts is That's just crazy. hella soul. So Compton kind of brought in this dope new like era of street urban culture, you know what I mean, when it came to hip hop and Long Beach and different spots when you east of the 110 really contribute to this culture we call Los Angeles hip hop or gangster rap. Real shit. For you coming up, you know, in that area, Watts and Compton, they both close to each other. Yeah, they neighbors. Basically. Yeah. But coming up in that area, uh, what was like probably one of your most memorable experiences coming up, like you know during them times? It's funny because where we at now, right? We we in Carson. I remember being like eleven, and the movie House Party or ten, because I think at that time movie stayed in the movie theater for like a year or two. People don't remember that because they leave now in eight weeks. But when I was younger, the movies would be in movie theaters for like months to years, and um. I remember coming over here with about five or six of my friends to the Carson Mall and watching House Party for the first time. Classic shit. And I know that sounds crazy, like as a memory, but just seeing it really took me back there. Being a little kid, my mom dropping us off, and I was watching Kid and Play for the first time dance. And I remember the shit out of that. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just growing up in LA County and just, you know, hands what I'm saying? down. Yeah. All just, the different shit, just getting into the real LA experience. Yeah, man, and and. Just enjoying life, you know what I mean? Even though you're from the ghetto, you're still enjoying life. Thanks. Hell yeah. When I talked to you earlier, as you was coming in, you were saying that you was just coming from the Watts Community Center? Yeah, it's WLCAC. Okay, so um, you, you into that, like community service? No, nah, no, nah, I ain't. Community. <laughs> no, you know my nigga Sticks is really into that. Shout out to Watts Sticks. Yeah, you got okay. an organization <laughs> called Think Watts. He's more into it, but I'm always down to help anybody black and from the community, period. So... I guess that made me somewhat of an activist. So they wanted to do some dope ideas and they was asking me what I'd be down. And I'm like, yeah, like I'm always down to help black people from any ghetto. I don't give a fuck from mines, you know, New York, Houston, whatever. Like, let's do it. If yeah. it's for the ghetto. Yeah, I like that. Um, listening to the new album that just came out, listening to what you said, everything. I'm getting the whole, you know, picture, you know what I'm saying, especially for the community, black folks. Hip hop, do you ever feel like you don't get enough credit for you know what you've been putting down over the years? Cause you've been you know been in the game, you really got you know some staples out here. Nah, no, nah, I don't. I don't think. Uh, 
I think as a rapper at times, maybe I could be a bit underrated. Not really, but somewhat. But no, nah, I think right now, like I, I think it's a lot to ask people to really see you when you ain't paid your dues. Mm, okay. It's, it's like an arrogance, you know what I mean? To really think people should notice you when you don't know what the fuck is going on or you don't know what you're talking about. Or you feel like you just so awesome that the world, you know, should be paying you attention. I, I think that's just this ridiculous arrogance that we have. So I never, I don't have that. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really need that. I, I think now I'm getting a lot of more respect because I paid my dues. You know what I mean? I went and did the homework. I went and did the studies. Outside of living the culture, like, I went and did a lot of homework on how to um, artistically show it and translate it to everybody else. It don't matter if you're from wherever ghetto across America, you're going to understand what I'm talking about on my record at this point because, uh, I did the homework, so everything is coming now that the dudes were paid, and rightfully so. Thanks. You got the catalog, um, whether that be mixtape or like studio albums. Sure. First sure. studio album probably came out, what, 2011? Yep, Beach Cruise is my first Beach studio Cruise. album. But I don't want to disrespect White Lightning like it wasn't a studio album. Like my man Guido, we was in the studio making that motherfucker. It wasn't, you know, it's not 2012 where you can have an inbox and a laptop and you can get you some YouTube beats. That, it wasn't like that in 2005, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 2005, you had to yeah, have a pay producer. for music yeah. and you needed a real studio. And um, my engineer at the time, Guido the Nose, DJ GLE, you know what I mean? Same person, but he produced that first album in his studio. It wasn't like no rinky dink setup. Like I did the whole White Lightning on that tape. Yeah. You know what I mean? People don't know that shit. The reason they like the sound, that shit is on tape. And um, at that time, you had to pay for beats. Right. Could, like the song De Niro that Dr. Dre loves. Like if you heard me tell a story about the song that Dr. Dre loved and the song he thought I should be doing, you know, what made him think I should be doing music for a living is that beat cost me five thousand dollars. Yeah. Saint Denson made that that uh did Get High for Styles, the song Good Time. I get high, I get high, I get high. Same person did De Niro. Um, 200 is a song produced by Rhythm D and Chill from Compton's Most Wanted. Rhythm D did real motherfucking G's for Easy e That beat cost me 3500 Yeah. Battle Cat did take a fade for me, for my little brother. My little brother, K-Style, paid for that. It was 2500 and that was a favor. Like, I throw you this. You know, I come in there cook for you. It's Battle Cat. Battle Cat got I love it. We yeah. can freak it. He got all these hits, but he trying to look out for a little watch nigga, so he does it for 2500 So, shout out to him because... That's how it That's used to be. Sure. Shit was exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. That was for sure below his rate. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been investing in yourself for a minute. Well, you had to at that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that first project, that's why I said I don't want to disregard White Lightning like it's not a studio album. That motherfucker cost probably about $20,000. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was my first time. I just had the right person. But Beach Cruiser is credited as my first studio album because it's with cash money. For sure. You kind of got two careers in a sense because you had your like mixtape career. And then you got your, what they call the studio album. But sure. I guess when the record deals come in. Sure, sure. When somebody else paying for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what was the transition like, though? Coming from, like, that that era was cold, too. You know, sure. I don't think that era gets enough credit. But what was the transition going from that and, and having them deals and doing deals, especially because you was doing deals with, like, Mac-10. Sure. It was, you, you came out the gate like some big heavyweight people. Well, before that, I had to deal with Sony Urban. Okay. They just dissolved it before my project could get finished or even really worked on. Um, and then I did the deal with Mac-10 and Birdman, Cash Money Records. Mm. Um, okay. It's definitely cheaper. So, okay, you was with Cash Money through Mac-10? Yeah, Okay. I was together. But before that, I had a deal at Sony Urban. But the company Sony Urban, Sony, the record company, dissolved Sony Urban. Okay. And so, I yeah. was just stuck on there for a while. and It was kind of a blessing, though. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out.